Good evening and welcome to what will probably be my last video that I record here in the United Kingdom for quite some time. So for those of you who clicked on this and are wondering just what the hell is he talking about, human spaceflight in Britain seems impossible, but at the same time, that is indeed what one of these companies intends to do. And it was an unexpected announcement that I got in my inbox yesterday, and something I think that is very newsworthy. And combined with that is another notification that I also got in my inbox from another company that I've been talking to, interviewing, etc. over the last few months. And I don't think the timing of these announcements are any sort of accident. I believe in the aftermath of the Virgin Orbit anomaly, we have a couple of companies who now see the possibility of becoming the first companies to successfully launch a payload into orbit from European soil now that Virgin Orbit has failed. One of these companies is Canadian, the other company is German, and one of them is looking to send a payload into orbit the conventional way with a rocket that is several times more powerful than what Rocket Lab has at their disposal, but nevertheless a fairly small payload as far as uh, most rockets are concerned. And then the other is looking to send payloads into orbit in a very unconventional way with a completely reusable hypersonic space plane. And I would have sworn that this other company Company, this Canadian company would have been more inclined to conduct this launch from American soil. They had told me that the opportunities, that the investment possibilities in the United States were more promising. However, there's been an announcement recently to indicate that their plans may have changed, and if regardless of what happens, they definitely have their sights set on Cornwall in the UK. The first of these press announcements comes from Rocket Factory Augsburg on the 11th of January, only two days after the Virgin Orbit anomaly. Quote, Launch service provider Rocket Factory Augsburg and Saxavord Spaceport have today announced their launch operations partnership. RFA will have exclusive access to Launchpad Fredo for orbital launches, meaning the company's first launch of its RFA-1 launch system, currently planned for the end of of 2023. The commercial spaceport in Shetland is ideally located for RFA to launch payloads at high cadence into polar and sun synchronous orbits. Existing logistics and infrastructure, launch readiness, as well as rapid implementation were key factors why RFA chose to partner with Saxavord, with the multi-year partnership which includes investments in the double-digit million pound range, RFA is securing its first flight launch site in order to be able to provide its services individually and flexibly to customer requirements. The launch pad and launch stool were fully completed by the end of 2022. The RFA launch pad is therefore the first for vertical orbit rocket launches in the UK and mainland Europe in the future. The launch pad will not only be used for orbital launches, but for testing and qualification of the RFA-1 core stage. Ages. These tests are expected to begin in mid-2023. The first launch will then be into a 500-kilometer high sun-synchronous orbit. We are super excited to launch our first flight from Saxavord. This partnership of privately fin financed companies enables the spirit and speed that we need to be on top of commercial small launch competition, said Jorn Sperman, Chief Commercial Officer at RFA. The Saxavord team was incredibly determined to build our launch pad and to get operations up and running. We are proud to be a part of this historic event for the UK, having built the first launch pad in mainland Europe. We firmly believe in the UK's strategic space vision and are absolutely convinced that the double-digit million investment in the site is well-placed on our part. Saxavord Spaceport CEO Frank Strang said, we're delighted to 
kick off the new year by announcing our partnership with RFA. We will support RFA across the entire life cycle of a launch from facilitating testing, inspections, fueling, and safety to supplying MET weather data and access to our ground station network for data capture and distribution. The entire team cannot wait to welcome RFA and work closely as we edge closer to the UK's first vertical space launch in Unst. So here's the deal. Having witnessed both the Virgin Orbit anomaly and also ABL's recent failure to reach orbit from Alaska, both of these companies, by the way, intending to be amongst the first to make a successful space launch from Europe, RFA has obviously now seen the possibility and the potential to be the first company to have a successful orbital launch from Western Europe. And wouldn't that be an amazing development given how promising these American companies were looking and how ahead of the game they seem to be on this race to orbit from Western Europe and now Germany seems to be coming in on the inside lane. But the more shocking update that appeared in my inbox was from Space Engine Systems. And before I move on to what the news is with them, I would ask you all to please subscribe to my channel and also check the description for various ways to support this content in the future. But SES is a Canadian-based company that also claims to be a trucking company to anywhere in space, but mainly focused on a lunar mission. SES space planes use air breathing combined cycle engines to get to space, and the first of their hypersonic space planes, also known strangely as the Sex Bomb, is going to be delivered to Cornwall Spaceport this year. The rocket engines on these space planes kick in only at a very high altitude. They have the Hello 1X demonstrator, which is planned to be launched in 2023, subject to regulatory approvals. The Hello 1 can carry 500 50 kilograms to low Earth orbit. The Hello 2 will carry 5.5 metric tons to low Earth orbit and can carry 1.6 metric tons to lunar orbit and 760 kilograms to the lunar surface. This is planned for 2025. By the way, if you're curious as to how all of this is possible, I have an in-depth interview with the CEO of the company linked in the description and also at the end of this video. All vehicles, except for the Sex Bomb, which is a drone, are piloted with an unmanned option. So all of them are human rated with the exception of the drone version. Believe it or not, they are currently taking orders for the Hello 1 and Hello 2 payloads. And they say we can clearly claim that we will be the lowest cost to space as we use air breathing engines through most of the Earth's atmosphere. Air Breathing Engines ISP specific impulse could be 3,800 to 4,200 seconds compared to rocket engines, which are less than 450 seconds. Air Breathing Engines, as the name suggests, picks up oxygen from the air. Rocket engines are totally inefficient within the atmosphere. It may be rocket science, but it is horrible in terms of efficiency in the Earth's atmosphere. All of our systems are 100% reusable and glide back to any airport. Deep Das, president and CTO of Space Engine Systems, says that we are very focused now to launch from the U.S. through our U.S. company, Space Engine Systems, but we are also setting up at Cornwall, UK at Newquay Airport. The Cornwall team has been very supportive and is standing by to help us at all levels. Our UK company, Space Engine Systems UK, are in the early stages of discussions with CAA for licensing to launch our various products from the UK. It is exploratory at this time. You never know that we may be the first to launch successfully from UK soil to space. We have an aggressive plan for launch. We are taking orders and selling seats. In other words, they are looking at human-rated space flight right from the get-go, hoping to be capable of carrying passengers to space until 2025. Now, do I have doubts about 
about their capabilities. Well, yes, of course I do. But at the same time, I'm impressed that they already have tangible results. They already have engines built and they are going to be delivering a test article to Cornwall this year. That's very promising to say the least. And once again, this was announced just a few days after the Virgin Orbit anomaly. Space engine systems like RFA have seen an opportunity. They too could be the first to put a payload into orbit from European soil. Everybody thought that this was a done deal, that Virgin Orbit was going to be the first to deliver a payload to orbit from Europe. The only race that appeared to be going on was between companies that wanted to conduct the first vertical launch from Europe, but now the game has completely changed. It is a wide open race, and these two competitors are as capable of doing it, at least in my opinion, as anybody else. Smash that like, hit that subscribe, and as always, stay angry about space.